Using the Mini Monster to process external audio is simple. Here, as an example, we've got a drum track in Logic that we're going to process using the effects version of the Mini Monster. To do this, we go to our Insert Effects in Logic and select GeForce, and then the Mini Monster effect. Now as soon as we instantiate this, we see the Mini Monster effect, but we can also hear that there's no more audio. Now the reason for this is simply that we need to now root audio through the Mini Monster. So, the first thing to do is turn off the Mini Monster's oscillators. Then, turn the external input on and turn up the volume. Now you still can't hear the groove, and this is because we effectively need to open the audio gate via a key on the keyboard. Now, this is cool, but obviously we need this to stay open all the time. So, to do this, we head over to the left and click on the red keyboard hold button. Now the audio gate stays open constantly once we play a note on the GUI. Now from here we can do all manner of cool stuff. We can change things like filter cut off value, change the resonance, and we can do other neat things such as add the Mini Monster delay. Here we have a delay of one beat on the left channel, and three quarters of a beat on the right channel. Another really cool thing to do is use those extra LFOs on a multitude of parameters. For example, here we've assigned it to filter cutoff, and then applied a degree of amplitude, and changed the LFO rate. Because our groove is tempo locked, all the LFOs we assign will be in time. Now we can apply this to pretty much any parameter. So let's apply a different LFO to resonance and say use a square wave. Now these are just two examples of placing LFOs on parameters, but you can apply this to anything aside from oscillator waveform and range knobs and obviously the switches. However, using LFOs with things like feedback knob and the various delay parameters can lead to some wild and wacky stuff. 